Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. And unfortunately, this is the end of an era because this is the only episode, the last one that I have not react to from this channel called Glamour, okay? They did this series, it's called Money Tours, where they go through people's bank statements and they see how they blow their money or how they invest it or how they spend it really wisely. This episode is titled, How a Chef Making $158,000 in Jersey City Spends Her Money, Wait For It, Glamour. So with that said, guys, let's make sure to do our part to destroy the like button, since the dislike button no longer exists. Let's begin now. Hi, Glamour. Welcome to my house. I hope you're hungry. Oh, whoa, look at that. Look at that French toast. You look at it. That looks delicious. I mean, let's call it for what it is. French toast at this point is more of like a dessert in the morning. It's so sugary and just sweet and delicious. But yeah, you gotta work that off later. Oh my gosh, what is this? Jeez, that looks like fried chicken with a honey glaze. I, I don't know what, what she, that is. Like she just <laughs> spit on top of it, like chewed bubble gum on top of that. <laughs> but regardless, it looks really good. By day, I'm a marketing manager at a food startup in New York City. And in my spare time, I run two food e-commerce businesses. All right, so she's busy and she has, she has no time for BS. I guarantee it. She, uh, her schedule is so packed that if she's not doing something that's getting her ahead, she's not doing it. My businesses are called The Spread, which is my private catering service and dinner party service, and Thunder Cakes, which is my e-commerce bakery. Uh, she's got you for dinner and for dessert. She's basically, she's quartering the food market here. So chances are you're gonna go to her for one or the other, and uh, the desserts, that looks good. I make $98,000 a year in my nine to five, and anywhere between four to $6,000 a month, depending on what events I'm throwing that month. Wow, that's, in, that's incredibly good. $160,000 a year, two jobs though. But that, she's gotta be working like 80 hours a week to pull this off, especially earning $98,000 a year from a salary. So I have a feeling she's working so much, she can't spend the money. She's, she, it, it's, got, it's gotta be good. I have around $12,000 in a traditional savings account. I have no money in retirement. Oh no, no money, but you know what? Chances are she's invested it all back into her business and uh, you know, She'll probably have a higher ROI putting it into making more desserts than she would in a 401k. I have $60,000 in student loan debt. All of that actually comes from my undergraduate degree. Um, I do have my master's, but that was paid for in full by a fellowship. Oh man, that's, that's, I hate seeing student loans. I mean, why? I, I get that it's for undergraduate. Why does undergraduate need to cost $60,000? Why? You could get just a good education on YouTube for free. Just do that instead. I really wish at one point, we just have YouTube education. That's it. Let's uh, enroll in a course, pay a hundred bucks. You could be uh, a plumber, an electrician. Just go through an online trade school. I would love to see that. And you get certified. Here's Google. Google certified me. I took my test at the very end. I watched YouTube videos. I hit the like button. I did grandma on Instagram. That's, that has a cool ring to it. Uh, but then you get certified. I would love to see that. Anyone could do it. I'm pretty strict now about the way that I use my credit cards because coming straight out of college, I was not the most fiscally responsible and racked up a good bit of change on um, a few retail cards. Oh, that's code word for uh, shopping shopping sprees. That's the problem though. You get students into student loan debt and let's just say 60 grand, it's a lot of money. Then you get a credit card and you're like, well, what's another few hundred dollars a month if it's, you know, 60 grand? I may as well. So what, 63, it doesn't matter. Meanwhile, this credit cards rack up at 20% interest and then uh, you're screwed. I live in a lofted one bedroom in Jersey City. Now, first of all, I gotta say, look gorgeous, right? But uh, look at this structure that she's sleeping on. This reminds me of like Step Brothers when they made that makeshift bed on top of another bed and then it just collapses. I'm just looking at this and being like, there's no way, there's no way they would permit this. Like, how do they know this thing is not gonna come collapsing down? This just seems like the landlord had a DIY project one weekend just with his buddies and they, and they just put this together. And they're like, there we go, we got a loft. Looks great. I would just be concerned just in case that thing falls. I spend $17.50 a month in rent and about $190 in utilities. Yeah, like look at this. These don't even look anchored at the bottom. There's no way you would expect to see some like big rivets or something in the bottom like bolting it down to the ground. You don't see that. My apartment is eclectic and cozy and warm and lived in. She's a great designer. I do like her taste a lot. It's just that bed gets me nervous. 
I hope she has insurance on that. I hope the landlord has insurance too. On the morning of an event, I typically wake up around 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? On the morning of an event? Jeez. I would expect like 6 a.m., but uh, you know what, 9? 9 works. So my favorite piece in my bedroom is actually my nightstand. Um, so I bought it for $5 at a yard sale. Ooh, that's cool. I like it. I think more people should be doing DIY projects like this. And for five bucks, you can't go wrong. Took it home, sanded it down, painted it like this really pretty midnight blue, and gave it a lot of really funky gold detailing, changed out the knob for some crystal. That's cool. That's a great touch. I like this a lot. I ended up getting into DIYs because both of my parents are incredibly crafty. Growing up with that influence made it really easy for me to kind of find pieces of my own that were really quirky and, and colorful and, and remake them. Yeah, she's talented. Listen. She could always do a side business of just doing this. Pick up furniture on the side of the road, paint it, put some gold crystal on it, and sell it for like $500 on Etsy. I, gu I guarantee people would buy it. Call it vintage, and people will pay 10 times more. Another way that I decorate the space using my own resources is with painting. I recently picked up portraiture, so I'm attempting to teach myself how to paint. She's good. She's very talented when it comes to anything artistic. All she really needs to make money is just uh, paint and a paintbrush. That's it, just, just give her that in a room and she'll make money. I wanted the kitchen to feel very colorful. I wanted it to not take itself too seriously. So I think food has to come from a place of a lot of love and a lot of energy and a lot of character. So I tried to incorporate as much of my personality into it as I could. It's really cool. I like it a lot. It shows her personality, which I think is really important for a spot like this. The kitchen when I moved in was all white. Jeez, look at that. Wow. What a transformation. I would have no idea. This to me, I'd be like, eh, you know, it is what it is. It's okay. But the way it looks now, w wouldn't even recognize it. In an attempt to cover up a fridge that's pretty regular, um, I put temporary wallpaper on it. <laughs> that's really, really, really clever. I like the stick on. The thing with the stick on is you could tell it's a stick on when you're like, you know, two feet away. But in pictures and stuff, or when you're more than a few feet away, it looks real. On a busy month with Thunder Cakes, I'm spending anywhere between four to $500 on ingredients, about $30 per month on my website, $400 for my photographer, and about $100 for marketing. All right, so uh, I mean, all of these are reasonable. Gosh, she's doing well if these are her only expenses. Each cake sells for about $40, and I typically make $30 profit per cake. In a busy month, I'm typically popping out about 200 orders. She needs to get to the point now, $6,000 a month in profit. Spend $3,000 a month hiring another person. I, I would say she just needs a little bit of help. But to get this six to like 12, she'll spend three and she'll make four times that back. That's what I think. The liquor and wine costs associated with that are typically like almost always $200 each. I typically spend about $300 per event for my tablescapes and decor. There are no location fees because I host here. That's smart. To be able to host in your own place, the downside is that they have to come to you, which uh, might be a bit of an inconvenience, but listen, if the food is like that, if the price is right, people are gonna do it. They're gonna get an awesome experience doing that too. I love working out of my kitchen, but I'm getting to the point where I really have to expand and expand into a more professional space. Yeah, see, that's the difficult part because if she wants to, uh, to expand, then she's got to get like her own retail spot and then she becomes a restaurant. The expenses are through the roof compared to what she's doing here. She'll probably make more money out of her house. If anything, then I think she should get a bigger live work spot and uh, just double down on the business. One appliance I definitely wish that I had was a dishwasher, um, but I also really enjoy washing the dishes by hand after each of the parties. It's pretty therapeutic for me, actually. Yeah, that's one thing for me. I definitely don't find that therapeutic. The only thing I found therapeutic was uh, washing the car. I love washing the car. It's nice, and, and you get that feeling of satisfaction afterwards when the car is clean, and you're like, I did that. That was me, and meanwhile, like you put on the music, you could listen to a podcast, you think, you get stuff done in your head. It's awesome, I love washing the car. I spend a lot on flatware. Not dishes, though. Now we've got about four to five hours before the start of the event, and I've got a little bit of downtime. I'll typically spend that time sitting on the couch, Rewatching Scandal, uh, scrolling through Twitter, or maybe if I have a little bit of time, I'll start on a DIY project. See, this to me seems like the time she should be optimizing on the dessert business. Spend the four hours on a dessert business, grow that, make 50% more on that. 
A reoccurring theme in my apartment is definitely texture. So the blue velvet wall kind of came to me kind of in a dream. Um, I just wanted something that felt like very lush and kind of sophisticated and just me and my staple gun. That's not bad. It's just a sheet of velvet that she's hung from the wall. I don't even think it's stretched to the wall or anything. It's, it's just hanging down. It looks good. I like it. So my closet's a little atypical. It's kind of like long um, and you can tell that it was a DIY from the previous tenant who put uh, rods up at the top instead of having more of the traditional shelf format. It's a really cozy spot. I like it a lot and the fact that she can work here too makes it even better. One area that I might splurge on myself in is definitely shoes. Just recently. Oh man. It, it, it uh, it's shocking to me, $60,000 in student loan debt, yet she spends $1,200 on shoes. That's not good. I mean, here's the thing. Part of me is like, well, she's doing dinner parties. It makes sense for her to be dressed nice. Okay, I, I get that. Uh, how about this? This is $1,195. Let's just take a one. Take a one out of there. That's it, $1,95. Still, those are expensive shoes, but they're not $1,195. Put that $1,000 towards the student loan debt, not towards this. I like shoes because they help my posture. Um, I do a terrible job of slouching. <sighs> yeah, no, I'm slouching. I'm slouching. You know what it is? My chair is too low, and uh, or my chair is too high, and uh, I had to slouch down there to be in frame. There we go. That uh, feels weird for work purposes, but I really think that it's very important for the rest of the space to kind of reflect me and be a place of comfort and solitude. I love it. Great spot. My only advice at this point, don't, don't buy $1,200 shoes. Put that towards the student loan debt. That's a good choice. Start up a Roth IRA, max that out every year, reinvest, I would say, in a bigger, better spot where you could host even more events, hire one assistant or someone to help you out so you could expand a little bit more. Otherwise, great spot and just double check the safety of that bet. That's all I'm saying, just in case. You never know, looks decent, but you don't wanna have a, a stepbrother situation where you, uh, you get up there and it just falls. Don't do that. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Also make sure, hit the like button, subscribe, Subscribe, it's totally free to do. You may as well do that, hit the notification bell. Also feel free to add me on Instagram and on the Iced Coffee Hour podcast. We've got new episodes posting every single Sunday. You don't wanna miss this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time.